So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the MOSFET IV characteristics. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about what's called the long channel model. And what that means will hopefully be clear in a second. So I'm assuming that you've, uh, you're taking a semiconductor physics course and you encountered this equation. Uh, IDS equals mu n C ox W over L times VGS minus VT times VDS minus one half VDS squared. Uh, and you're just thrown, the, the equation was just thrown at you, maybe very briefly uh, they went over where it came from. Uh, but essentially, they just throw it at you and expect you to memorize it. In this video, I'm going to try to go over where exactly this equation comes from. And so this is also known as uh, MOSFET operating in the triode region. And so I'm going to try to describe the model behind where this equation comes from and how we actually arrive at it. So uh, it turns out that the model is actually pretty, pretty simple, actually uh, scary simple. So if we've got a, say we've got a MOSFET right here, so this is going to be our gate. We've got some, gate's got some thickness uh, here. So it's, it's got some metal up top, probably copper or aluminum or polysilicon. Uh, let's just say it's aluminum or something. Then we've got an oxide, which essentially uh, protects the gate or protects the rest of the MOSFET from the gate. Then we've got our P substrate, our N plus wells. This is a NMOS MOSFET. And so I'm assuming that you've seen all this before. And so the model that we're going to use is basically we're going to ignore all the complicated stuff and just pretend that we only care about this region here the channel. And specifically, we're assuming that the channel is just comprised of a bunch of charges. And here, they're assumed to be actually uh, negative charges, because this is an NMOS transistor. So we've got a bunch of negative charges piling up here. And we're interested in the current from the source to the drain. So we're interested, or Typically, we're interested in the current from the drain to the source or the electron flow from the source to the drain, IDS. So we want an equation for IDS. We want IDS equals what? Uh, what does it depend on? Uh, and I've already told you the answer up here, but how do we actually get to that answer? And how can we remember that answer? Well, we know that a MOSFET behaves like a variable capacitor, right? So if we've got... If we apply a certain voltage to the gate, uh, nothing happens. We're increasing the voltage, nothing happens, nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, we'll start to get these carriers accumulate near the edge at a certain threshold voltage. So at VG, and we'll just say uh, VGC, uh, because this is the voltage relative to the channel, uh, or the little portion of the substrate that we care about. So at VGC equals the threshold voltage, we start getting charge accumulation. At the interface, so we start getting negative charges piling up here and positive charges piling up on the gate. Now, as we increase the voltage on the gate, there are always charges piling up on the gate. Uh, but the p-type substrate has too many positive charges such that the channel uh, doesn't actually look like it has any negative charge. So we have to overcome that first. So this is all that we're going to use to derive this model. We're going to assume that this MOSFET acts like a capacitor. And we know that the charge of a capacitor is just equal to the capacitance times the voltage. Except in our case, it takes a certain voltage before the MOSFET starts acting like a capacitor. So we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to say that Q is equal to the capacitance times some voltage minus the threshold voltage. And so this is the equation that we're, we're going to start with. 
well, we're not actually interested in the charge. We're interested in the current. Uh, and how do, how do we relate the two? Well, we know if we've got, uh, say we've got a cube of charge here, and it's got some value Q, we know that the current, so the current flowing through some plane here, uh, the charge block is just moving along, minding its own business. Uh, the current is just how long it takes this block of charge to move through this plane. So it's the total charge divided by the time that it takes. And so up until the charge block reaches the, uh, reaches the plane, we don't have any current, and then all of a sudden we start having current as the, as the charge block transitions through the, through the plane. Well, okay, uh, what, is, what is the time it takes a charge block to transition through the, through the plane? Well, um, we know the, the charge block has a certain length to it, right? Uh, so, and it's got a certain velocity v. So the time that it takes is just the length divided by the velocity. Uh, well, that's, that's fairly simple, right? So we can rearrange our, or plug that into our equation. We say that I is equal to Q, or the total charge of our block, divided by L over V, or Q divided by L times V. And V here is the velocity. So why don't we call this like VQ, the velocity of a charge block Q? Well, OK, uh, so from this, from this, where do we go? Well, uh, if we want to know the charge uh, of a capacitor, Recall that we've got a capacitor here. We know that the charge is just CV, or as we said above, CV minus V threshold. So we can add that in. We've got the capacitance V minus V threshold divided by the length times the velocity of the charge block. And uh, if you've taken semiconductor physics, you'll know that Ohm's law on the microscopic level just says that the velocity of a given charge, charged particle, is just equal to the mobility uh, times of that charged particle times the electric field. So we can replace that in our equation. We're starting to get, starting to get closer. And uh, I'm going to replace this V with uh, VGC. Uh, the voltage between the gate and the channel, just so it's clear what voltage we're talking about. And uh, the reason I'm replacing this V velocity uh, as quickly as I can is so we don't have multiple Vs floating around. Uh, so that's equal to C V G E minus V T times the mobility times the electric field divided by the length. Well, okay, uh, you can probably guess what we're going to do next. We're going to use another elementary formula uh, to figure out the rest of these things. So what is the capacitance? What is the electric field? Uh, now, we're assuming that we know the mobility. We're assuming that we know the dimensions of this thing. Uh, so the, the, those, are the, those are the only assumptions that we make. Well, uh, on to capacitance. So we know that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor that's filled with some dielectric of permittivity epsilon. Uh, we know that the capacitance is just the area times that epsilon divided by the thickness, or the distance between the two plates. Uh, here we call this uh, T-ox, or the thickness of the oxide, because that's the thickness of the capacitance, or the dielectric, that we're, that we're interested in. And area we can just rewrite as the width of the transistor times the length of the transistor. So W times L times epsilon divided by the thickness of the oxide. And so that's, we just plug that back into the equation. So W times L times epsilon divided by thickness of the oxide. And then we've got another L on the bottom. Uh, and then that's multiplied by mu E times VGE or VGC minus VT. And sorry if the equation is starting to get a little, a little complicated. Uh, we're going to simplify it right now. So first, these L's are going to cancel out. Uh, and we're going to group these, these terms, uh, Tox and Epsilon, into a single term, Cox. Or the, in other words, we're going to say that the total capacitance is equal to Cox times the area of the transistor. 
or the, so CX is a capacitance density, if you will. It's the capacitance per unit area of the device. So if we cancel out L, we make that substitution, we get our formula, uh, W times CX times mu E times VGC minus VT. And we're starting to get closer. See, we've, we've got a W, we've got a mu, uh, we've got a CX. We, we still have this E, which we will want to get rid of. And we've got this awkward VGC, because we, we don't know what VC is. We don't, uh, the channel isn't a terminal of the transistor. So let's, uh, let's see what else we can do to this equation. Well, uh, how about let's just uh, attack this first one, E. Uh, so what is the electric field in the, in the channel? Uh, in terms of what we know. Well, if we go back to our transistor, we know that there's a source on this side. There's a drain on this side, or we can flip the sides if you prefer. And there's some voltage between the two. VDS. And we know just from basic electromagnetics that the electric field between two points in space, uh, if everything is homogeneous and everything works out everything works out nicely, is just equal to the voltage divided by the distance between them, which here is the transistor length. So we're assuming that these wells are all at the same potential. Well, okay, we can, we can make that substitution. And then we get mu times Cox times W. And now we have the over L that we were expecting, which is from our electric field, uh, times VDS times VGC minus VT. And we're almost done. The, the only thing left is VGC. Uh, so how do, we, how do we figure out what VGC is? Uh, well, if we look at our MOSFET again, uh, this is VC. So we've got, a, we've got a certain gate voltage that we apply, right? VG. Uh, and we've got a channel voltage here, VC. And then we also know there's a source voltage here, VS, and a drain voltage here, VD. And, you know, if we just make some, uh, some somewhat sketchy arguments, uh, like, say, pretend there's two resistors here, and there's some current flowing through this I, then we know that VC is, and let's say these resistors are the same value. And this is, you know, fairly realistic because the material itself is going to have a resistance. So we, we know that this point VC has to be the midpoint between VS and VD. That's just a, a basic voltage divider. Um, so we can rewrite VC. Uh, VC is just VS plus VD over 2, or it's the midpoint. Um, and now we just need to perform some algebraic wizardry, uh, which all, all, all that ever amounts to in engineering is uh, subtracting or adding 1, or is subtracting or adding 0 from an equation. So we're going to say VC is equal to VS over 2 uh, plus VD over 2. And then we're going to add 0. And the reason we're going to add 0 is so we can rearrange this equation, make it nice and pretty. Uh, we're going to add VS over 2 minus VS over 2. Well, okay, so rewriting the full equation, this is this is going to be our al almost our final form. Uh, IDS is equal to mu n, and th so this is mu of the electrons. Cox W over L times, uh, and we had a VDS, and then VGC, which is VG minus uh, VC, which is VS over 2 plus VS over 2, that's VS. Um, VD over 2, so plus VD over 2, and then there was another minus VS over 2. Oh, and then uh, minus the threshold voltage VT. I might have uh, forgotten that up there as well. Okay, so all we need to do is group things and rearrange them. Uh, so mu N, C ox, W over L times VDS times VG minus VS, which is just VGS, uh, plus one half. And now we're going to group this VD and this VS plus one half uh, VSD, or we can rewrite that as minus one half VDS. 
minus one half VDS minus VT. And then all we need to do is factor this VDS into all these terms, and we're done. And we have our final equation for a MOSFET, uh, which is the drain current, it's mu n C ox W over L times VGS minus VT times VDS minus one half VDS squared. And so that's sort of where the equation comes from. That's the, that's the derivation for it. I uh, hope you found this video interesting and hopefully not too mathematical uh, and we're kind of able to follow along with what we're doing. I strongly suggest that you, uh, you try to do this yourself because the thinking process behind it is the same thinking process behind uh, basically all of engineering. So hope you enjoyed it.